Okay, we have a rather interesting topic today. I just finished lunch and a little bit of veggie sushi, and my um, my doctor's been encouraging me to walk after my lunch. I always do it after dinner. Terry and I go for a walk after dinner. It's the best thing we ever did. Helps me lose a bit of the, the gut, and it definitely makes me feel better. So now I've been doing it at lunch, too, so I'm back from a walk. Transistors, do they get old? That's our topic today, and it comes from Christopher in Redwood City, California. I enjoyed the video about how long tubes last, and it made me wonder about solid-state devices. We're always talking about replacing tubes because of age, but not solid-state devices. Do solid-state devices not age and change over their life? And why don't we talk about the age of them and replacing them at some interval? Well, the short answer is no, they don't. Now, <clears throat> that's not entirely true, but for practical purposes, let's suggest that it is. So a tube is very different than a solid state device, obviously. One is a, uh, a glass envelope with a vacuum inside of it, and you've got your plate and your cathode and your grid. You've got a, uh, a means to heat up the, the, the cathode and start boiling electrons. And then the grid, you know, it's kind of like a fly swatter. That's kind of the input where the signal goes. And that will allow those electrons to stream to the plate. And a transistor is very, very different. It's, you know, it's a chunk, kind of a layered piece of doped silicone or germanium, some of the original ones were made out of germanium. And for all intents and purposes, they don't age. Now, having said that, we know that LEDs, for example, which are light emitting diodes, they are transistors, if you will, they have a lifespan and they will over time die, but it's very long. And we've been making equipment uh, from solid state electronics for far more than 40 years. Some of the first ones we ever made were 1974. And those products are still going strong today. If you change the silicone in those devices, if you could even find the transistors available anymore, which you actually you could. I mean, they were all based on a, a product way back when called a, an MPS 8099. And 8599, that's when we switched from our 709C op amps to discrete circuits very early on, maybe 1975. And those old transistors, the 8099 and 8599, essentially higher voltage lamp drivers, um, they're still around. And we, I don't know if we use them anymore or not. I think we use the new modern version of an 8099. Uh, still to this day, it's not a particularly low noise device, but it's it's relatively high voltage and very nice, good beta. It's, it's a good device. So we still use those. So, you know, 45 years, is it going to go 100 years? Probably. It, 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 let's put it this way. There's no sense in changing solid state electronics within your lifetime. So you can be assured of buying those things and having them work and passing it on to your kids. Now, other parts are not so lucky, especially capacitors. So capacitors are different. Capacitors, discrete components like that, usually uh, do degrade over time, especially the electrolytic kind. They, they are made, uh, they're called uh, uh, chemical electrolytics because they, they have a sort of an electrolytic goo inside of them. They're, they're housed in steel cases or aluminum, and over time, heat and other things can dry them out. So those types of passive components do need to be replaced and should be replaced. Other types of capacitors, film caps, not so much, but the electrolytics certainly do. And they're, they're mostly used in power supplies, big coupling caps, and, and like that. But as far as uh, solid state electronics goes, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it. I think you're in good hands. <laughs> hey, thanks. That was a really good question. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye.